Hey everybody, it's Mr. Mott. What we're going to do is go through experiment 25, which is uh, finding the rate and order of a chemical reaction. We're going to be mixing some iron 3 chloride solution, slightly acidified, uh, with a potassium iodide solution. When we do that, it's going to get dark because you're going to be producing some iodine in solution. Uh, so far, I have uh, calibrated my uh, uh, calibrated my spectroviz with a water blank. Uh, and next, we're going to do is set our wavelength. Uh, just so that we have something in there as far as solution wise, um, I put my iron solution in the spectroviz. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and start collecting our data. And we're going to see a peak um, over here, kind of in the, in the blue range. Not sure why my graph is all squished, but these things are weird sometimes. I'm going to go ahead and stop collecting my data. Um, and uh, there we kind of auto scales. And so what you can see is that our peak is over here in the blue, uh, right around there. But we are not going to be collecting our wavelength there. Um, our wavelength where we're going to collect it at is going to be around 470. So I'm going to use my little toggle button to scroll over. If we didn't know this and we had to, uh, to set the wavelength, we'd probably maybe do a dummy trial where we mix these together and we saw where the peak wavelength was absorbing. But our testing method says uh, that's where we're going to be at. Um, once we can do that, we're going to go up in the top left into the meter um, and we're going to change the mode to time based. And then our time base, we're going to collect it at um, 200 seconds, which is the default. All the other settings look good, so I'm going to hit OK. Um, normally, I would maybe save this. Um, you can save it at any point. Um, I'm just going to discard this data here. Um, and notice uh, that it's not saving the wavelength, which is a real pain in the butt. But um, there's a way to around this. So we can tap on the red, and then we can go to change wavelength. And then we can change the wavelength to 470 like we want. So for some reason, sometimes the... Um, whether I save the file or not, um, it, uh, it sort of defaults that and uh, um, it doesn't save it uh, when it should. All right. So now what we're going to do, we're in time based mode. Um, what we want to do is that we want to be able to mix our solutions and the quantities that they say. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix them um, in this beaker. Uh, and uh, once I mix them, I'm going to make sure I've got a cuvette ready. I'm going to mix them together, pour the solution into the cuvette, um, and then I'm going to start collecting my data. The, uh, this is not the concentration of it. This is just an old label. Um, and, uh, and what we're going to do is we want to sort of, when we collect our three trials, we want to do this um, in terms of mixing and then putting our solutions into the cuvette. Um, around the same time uh, and try to be as consistent as we can. So you kind of want to have everything ready. You want to have a, an empty cuvette. Um, you want to have a, uh, um, you want to have an empty cuvette. You want to have uh, your solutions ready to mix and, and all of that uh, kind of at the same time. All right. So I'm going to do this uh, kind of off screen here. Going to mix my, my first set of solutions. I've got 10 milliliters of of each solution uh, and no water. So I'm going to mix these together uh, and then we're going to uh, put them in the cuvette and then we're going to hit start. So I've dumped them in there. Okay, it should be enough to kind of mix it. All right, and make sure my cuvette is clean. So without kind of rushing, you can then go ahead and hit start. So it's real important I don't want to necessarily rush when I'm collecting my data, um, but uh, you know you don't want to ever want to rush in, in a uh, chemistry lab. Uh, but at the same time, we want to be sort of in the same rhythm so that uh, it, it eliminates any um, inconsistencies when we're collecting our data, especially since our solution is getting darker. We can actually kind of see that um, in the beaker as well. This is darker than. Um, our solution of iron. 
and it's going to continue to get to get darker. All right. So we're going to run, let this run for uh, 200 seconds, um, and then um, uh, and we'll have our graph. Uh, we're going to do two more sets of data. Uh, our second run is supposed to have 10 milliliters of the iron solution, five of the potassium iodide, five of water. Uh, and then our third one is five of the iron solution, 10 of the potassium iodide, and five of the water. Um, and uh, so I can start measuring those out and getting ready. One of the key things that when you are analyzing your data here is that when you go to, um, when you, after this run, when you go to collect your other runs, so we can kind of compare them all in the same area on our graph, uh, you want to make sure that when you go to collect your data again, so once this turns green, uh, after the 200 seconds, we press this and we want to make sure that we store that data. Then we can sort of overlap all of our runs together and, and, and we want to be able to analyze our data all in the same area of our graph. All right. So I'll pick this up after, um, after this is complete and we'll uh, do our other runs. All right, the first trial is done. Uh, for my second trial, I've got uh, 10 milliliters of the iron solution, five of the potassium iodide, and five of the water. Um, I've got those in, uh, in test two, in uh, graduate cylinders. We'll pour them together and do, to be able to get ready for our second run. Okay, so I've dumped them. I'm gonna pour them into my, into my cuvette. Okay, we'll put this in our spectroviz. And then we're gonna go ahead and collect this data and then we're gonna store it. All right. So in this one, um, we have less potassium iodide. So um, what we do when we're collecting this uh, um, concentration versus rate data that we're going to have. Uh, we're going to be able to compare different runs to each other and uh, uh, and see how the rate was affected by changing the concentration. So from, from the first trial to the second one, we kept the concentration or the amount of iron the same. Um, and also to think about is we're keeping the, the, the reason we added the water um, when we added less potassium iodide, we added less water, um, we were to keep the volume the same, and that's going to help our calculations in a little bit. All right, we'll let this run, and then uh, and we'll be able to take a look at our data, and I'll go ahead and uh, start this when we have our third trial. All right, that's the finished uh, graph of my second trial, um, and now we're going to do our third trial here. I'll take my uh, cue that out. You kind of see this definitely getting darker with time. Uh, for my third trial, I've got five milliliters of uh, the iron three chloride, five of water, and ten of the potassium iodide. All right. So I'm going to mix those, pour them into a cuvette, and go ahead and get started. Clear, clean cuvette. We'll go ahead and collect. And again, I'm going to hit store. All right, so we've got our absorbance going. And uh, we'll let this run its course and check, the, uh, um, check out what our graphs look like and then go through our analysis uh, once we can look at all of those uh, then together. All right. All right, everybody, there's my third run uh, all done. Um, and uh, next what we're gonna do is our analysis. So um, w one thing that we can do to actually do all this is kind of show all three runs at the same time. Um, and what we wanna try to use and in, in, in to uh, look at is a linear portion um, of the graph that covers about 30 to 40 seconds of the reaction. Um, and, uh, and that's what we're going to be looking at. Um, so, you know, in terms of linear, like you can see, like in the first parts of our graph, 
they're not too linear in the beginning, they become more linear here. So um, I kind of want to say maybe something like here. Um, and it says like 30 to 40 seconds. So, um, so that's at 140. And then what was this at? So that's at 140. And then if I was here, it's at 90. So 30 to 40 seconds would be maybe like from here to here. Um, that could be a portion that was linear. If you felt a different portion was linear, we could select that as well. Uh, maybe I'm going to say from here to here looks pretty linear for all runs. Um, so once we do that, what we can do then is analyze and then do a curve fit. And, and I'll just do the, uh, uh, the first one here and I'll do a linear fit. And uh, this actually maybe is, is easier to see if we just show that like the first run here. And then so the first run, let's do a, a curve fit to make it linear. Um, and what we wanna do is we wanna record um, the slope. The slope is our initial rate. So for our first one, for our first run, we're gonna record the slope as our, or our initial rate as 0 0.002034. All right, that's going to be our first one there. All right. Um, so that's one that we want to record. Um, the lab, lab quest saves it for us. If we look at run two, we also want to do that same thing where we do a linear fit. Um, so let's do a curve fit of that and make it linear. And we want to record that value as our uh, slope of our second run, which is our initial rate, all right? So 0 0.001025, okay? Uh, and then lastly, we'll do our third run, um, same, same idea. And then um, let me go actually go back and then uh, to see what that was. I didn't, did it really quickly here go back and do it again so for our third one we had our initial rate as 0 0.0011964 that's our initial rate which is our slope and once we have these plus our data in terms of our concentrations we can compare how concentration affected the uh the initial rate all right that'll be in our next video all right thanks for watching